In this lecture, we will look at some of the salient points in antenatal counseling for fetal urological problems. Of late, with the advent of the antenatal ultrasound, we are able to pick up the renal problems much earlier. It used to present as a huge mass with often loss of function. Nowadays, we are picking up much early even before the baby is born. On the other hand, it also picks up them very early so that it causes enormous distress to the parents. So we need to cut a balance and then give them a view on what is the outlook for these patients. Another common problem is transient hydronephrosis. This is a 32 week ultrasound showing minimal hydronephrosis. For this, we need to know what are the normal cutoffs. A hydronephrosis of less than 4 mm in second trimester, less than 7 mm in third trimester, and less than 10 mm after birth uh, can be considered as normal and the parents can be positively reissued. On the other hand, if the hydronephrosis is more than 10 mm in the second trimester, 15 in third, or 20 after birth, then we have to warn them that it could be a severe hydronephrosis. So the severe hydronephrosis group need a careful follow-up and assessment to decide which are the ones which need an intervention. One of the common cause of a severe hydronephrosis is a pelvic junction obstruction. So this is an ultrasound of a one month old male child with a, a pelvis of 32 millimeter after birth and um, this is an antenatally diagnosed hydronephrosis of 17 millimeter and a renogram after birth revealed that uh, the kidney was functioning less with evidence of obstruction so this child would most likely need a pyeloplasty so these are the hydronephrosis with a fetal lipid diameter of around 15 millimeter or more and they progress to sometimes more than 30 after birth and they end up having surgery. Sometimes we get to see patients with a bilateral hydroeurotonephrosis in a boy child. Posterior urethral valve is an important diagnosis and it often looks like a keyhole sign which is a combination of the dilated bladder and dilated posterior urethra. So they need a quick assessment after birth and an MCU in this patient shows a classical dilatation of the posterior urethra with the cutoff in the posterior urethra. So they need a cystoscopy and palfalgration. Now fetal counseling of them uh, is a little tricky business. Uh, most of them have normal lica with a stable hydronephrosis. So most of the posterior urethral valve need just simple ultrasound follow-up and a valfalgration after birth. Some of them can be delivered a little early at 37 weeks to avoid lung hypoplasia. Very rarely we encounter severe oligohydromnia or necrogenic kidneys and in this group the chronic kidney disease rate is high and the parents may opt for termination. Sometimes in severe oligohydromnia with salvageable renal function we can insert a shunt called a sequamniotic shunt to prevent the progression of the renal disease. Now this has got us some advantages and disadvantages. It can cause preterm labor, it can cause infections and in the long run it may not have much benefit based on the recent studies. However, the amniotic shunt is an option. Multicystic dysplastic kidney is where the kidney is replaced by multiple cysts and the parenchyma is not visualized. So these patients need a confirmation on a DMSA scan when there is no uptake. It mostly spontaneously involutes and it doesn't need surgery. Sometimes the kidney is absent in the renal fossa and if that is seen on antenatal ultrasound, the parents don't have to panic. They can be favorably counseled because most often a single kidney status is absolutely compatible with a normal life expectancy. Sometimes you may have a pelvic kidney and a GMSA scan may pick it up later. 
So a single kidney status is uh, something which has to be favorably counseled. Duplication anomalies can present as a urethrocele, which is often picked up as a small bulbous uh, swelling of the distal end of the uterus seen within the bladder. And um, these can be picked up patinately as well. So they can be confirmed with various imaging techniques like these. And all they need is a cystoscopy and puncture and very rarely a laparoscopic procedure. Fluctuating hydronephrosis during the fetal life and urinary tract infection after birth can be because of vesicourotric reflux. If it is mild, it can be treated with a cystoscopy and stink procedure. Severe pyelonephritis and recurrent infections, they may need a reimplantation surgery for high grade reflux. So, at the outset, uh, fetal uh, renal problems uh, can be counseled depending upon what we see and what uh, various findings are there on the ultrasound as well as uh, the important thing is they have to be evaluated after birth and that evaluation uh, postnatal evaluation is crucial in, in a boy child with a bilateral hydronephrosis because they have to be immediately dealt with after birth whereas if it is in unilateral hydronephrosis or a girl child we can wait for an ultrasound up to 72 hours we can do a renogram at one month and we can even plan further follow-ups at two months or three months depending upon the uh, imaging findings of the renogram so the message is posterior urethral valve is suspected in a boy child with a bilateral hydrourethronephrosis and they need a prompt referral. Sometimes it is easier to refer the mother. So antenatal transfer is the easiest way rather than. So to summarize, um, most of the um, fetal uh, urological problems don't need any intervention. Often it is unilateral transient hydronephrosis and all they need is a regular ultrasound follow -up. sometimes they need a delivery at a tertiary center uh, for conditions like posterior urethral valve or severe PUG obstruction and uh, fetal intervention is indicated in select cases of posterior urethral valves um, where even the role of the intervention itself is um, still being debated Termination of pregnancy is very rarely only advised in conditions like bilateral polycystic kidney disease or bilateral multicystic dysplastic kidney disease or sometimes in a case of a posterior urethral valve which is diagnosed very early in gestation with uh, um, severe anhydramnios or echogenic kidneys. So this is the summary of antenatal counseling and most of them uh, can be favorably counseled. Thank you very much for listening to this speech. Thank you.